and Burnick has been actively releasing gameplay footage of their upcoming RG556 handheld set to hit the market after the Chinese New Year holiday. It appears to surpass the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro in almost every aspect. While they might be similar in performance, Anbernic has a history of delivering superior products at lower prices, especially when they have a benchmark to surpass. In this case, Anbernic is aiming to outdo the RP4. Let's delve into the specs and dissect them to see what this handheld really has to offer. On Bernic RG556 specs, can it play PlayStation 2 and GameCube properly? All right, before we dive into the details, let me make one thing clear. The primary allure for those interested in buying the Anbernic RG556 is its capability to play PlayStation 2 games. Let's be real, nobody is purchasing this device to play SNES or PlayStation 1 games. In today's world, even the display on your washing machine could probably handle those systems. We shouldn't kid ourselves. The true measure of this device is whether it can deliver perfect or at least decent emulation for PS2s, GameCube, Vita, or 3DS games. And for that, one aspect is crucial, the processor GPU. The RG556 is equipped with the Unisoc C T820 processor, which, to be frank, is a meh choice. The only notable phone featuring this processor is the Nubia Neo 5G, which comes with 8 gigs of RAM. If you look at the gaming performance of that phone, you'll notice it manages decent PS2 performance, but it's a mixed bag. Some games will run smoothly, while others will struggle significantly. This processor doesn't have the raw power to push games like the Odin 2 does. Ether SX2 is a solid emulator, though it's not receiving updates, making it the likely choice for the RG556. There's another emulator, Nether SX2, which is still in its early stages. It shows promise with good performance, but hasn't reached the level of Ether SX2 yet. For those interested in modern mobile gaming like PUBG or Call of Duty Mobile, temper your expectations with this processor. High graphics settings are out of reach. You'll need to settle for medium settings. The processor handles Genshin Impact adequately, delivering 30 to 40 FPS, but don't expect a smooth 60 FPS experience. As I mentioned, it's a mediocre processor offering mediocre performance. It might be less powerful than the RP4 Pro, but I'm pretty sure it will also be more affordable. But when we said they are using a cheap processor, it also indicates that they can bring the price down and would be able to give you almost equivalent performance of RP4 Pro. At the heart of the Anbernic RG556's appeal is its display, a 5.5-inch 16-twine 1080p panel. Rumored to be OLED, this screen promises vibrant colors and deep blacks, offering an immersive gaming experience go. In terms of memory, the Unisoc T820 supports up to LPDDR4-4X. The Anbernic RG556 is expected to come with at least 8 GB of RAM. Battery life is crucial for any handheld device, and the RG556 doesn't disappoint with its 5500 mAh battery. This large capacity means gamers can enjoy extended play sessions without the constant need for recharging, making it perfect for long commutes or travel. The design of the RG556 is both ergonomic and visually appealing. It features offset switch-style sticks and a smooth, glossy D-pad, ensuring comfort during long gaming sessions. How can it actually overthrow Retroid's product? The only feasible strategy is to price the RG556 between 150 to 180 USD. If they manage this, nobody will even consider the Retroid Pocket Pro 4. The issue with Retroid's early batches is well known. They're plagued with mechanical problems. Triggers fall off, screens are subpar, and some units even lose audio. This situation has arisen because handheld YouTubers have shamelessly promoted these devices to their viewers, fully aware of Retroid's history of releasing faulty products in their initial batches. The surge in orders for the RP4 was likely unexpected even for Retroid, leading to these quality issues. These YouTubers, who possess every device imaginable, were aware of this but continued to defend and promote the product, encouraging people to pre-order. Now, if you visit Retroid's Reddit page, every third post is about delivery delays and product fault. It's a pathetic situation. I'm not suggesting Anbernic is any better in this regard. Their products are likely to have faults too, and by pre-ordering, you're essentially beta testing their devices. However, their offering is expected to be more affordable. 
People should refrain from pre-ordering this or any other handheld device. We need to send a clear message that we won't accept faulty products at full price, nor should we be grateful for a good replacement warranty. What we want is a perfect device from the start, not one that requires OTA updates to function properly. If these companies can't ensure quality testing before release, they shouldn't be launching a new device every third week. If you're considering purchasing this for PS2 emulation with the expectation of flawless performance, I'd advise against it. Despite the impressive demos showcasing games like DMC3, God of War, Black, or Half-Life, be aware that many games either won't start or will suffer from significant frame rate issues leaving you questioning your purchase decision. It's better to wait until this product hits the market and see reviews from honest YouTubers who are brave enough to highlight the device's limitations right in their video titles. That wraps up this video. If you found the content helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll be back with more soon. Take care and stay safe.